Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be installing the ARM front mount intercooler on this 2013 GTI. Let's get started. The first step is to remove the negative battery cable from the battery. This is because in order to take the front bumper off we have to disconnect the crash sensors and those are responsible for deploying the airbags. And since we want to eliminate any chance of that happening we take this small step just as a precaution. To remove the cable, loosen the nut until you can slide it off the negative battery terminal. Position it in a safe place where it's not going to come into contact with any other metal parts in the engine bay. Now we can disconnect the two crash sensors. They're located behind the front grill area, one on the driver's side and one on the passenger side. On the yellow end of the connection, there's a small red tab which needs to be pressed downward or away from the connection in order to switch it to the unlock position before it can be removed. And while we're back here, let's go ahead and disconnect the headlights also. Here we can see the two ends of the crash sensor connection as well as the two ends of the headlight connection on the passenger side of the car. Behind the driver's side headlight, is the hood release cable joint inside a plastic housing. We're going to unclip the plastic housing from the metal frame, open it up with a screwdriver, and then disconnect the joint. Now let's go ahead and remove the four T25 Torx bolts holding in the top of the grill. With those four bolts removed, we'll then be able to remove the grill by pulling firmly outwards. With the front grill removed, we can now access the two T25 Torx bolts behind it holding in the front bumper. Next, we're going to remove the five T25 Torx bolts inside each fender holding the front bumper on. If you're able to turn the wheels away from the fender, it'll help give you easier access to these bolts. Next, we're going to get under the car and remove the eight T25 Torx bolts along the front of the bumper. And we're also going to remove the eight T20 bolts holding in the splash guard. Here you can see the four T25s across the front of the bumper on the passenger side and also the four T20s holding in the splash guard. With all these bolts removed, the only thing holding the bumper on now are the clips between the fender and the bumper. To get the bumper to release from the clips, pull firmly on the edge of the bumper inside the wheel well. But before you take the bumper completely off, make sure you disconnect the fog light and the side marker on each side. This is also the point where you disconnect your headlamp washer hoses, if your car is equipped with it. And now you should be looking at something that looks like this. Next we're going to be removing the radiator assembly to install the OEM intercooler delete kit. And we're going to start by removing the four 16 millimeter bolts on each side of the bumper brace. If you have access to two long bolts, you can replace one of the 16 millimeter bolts on each side with them, and that way they'll support the radiator assembly while you continue to work on the car without having to worry about holding it up. If you don't have two long bolts similar to these, then just leave one of the four original bolts on each side halfway loosened. Next, we're going to be removing the three T25 Torx bolts just below the fender on each side. And the one T30 Torx bolt on each side just above the headlight. After that, we're going to disconnect the OEM intercooler hoses, which use a C-clip type connection. Just use a screwdriver or a pick to pop the C-clip out of its groove. It's a good idea to have a towel or a rag handy that you can put inside of the intercooler piping after you disconnect it so that any oil that gets trapped in there doesn't drip out on you while you're working on the car. On the driver's side OEM hose that connects to the throttle body pipe is a standard clamp that can be loosened with a screwdriver or a socket. Sometimes the rubber on the intercooler hose and the plastic for the throttle body pipe will bind to each other and so after you take that bracket off just get a screwdriver or a pick in there to separate the two in order to be able to pull them apart. Next remove the air temperature sensor from its bracket in front of the intercooler and also the electrical connection to the radiator fan. At this point the only thing holding up the bumper assembly are these two T30 Torx bolts and the two 16 millimeter bolts we left loose earlier. So before removing these two Torx bolts, 
make sure the two 16 millimeter bolts we left in earlier are still secure and at least halfway threaded in so they can support the bumper. After you've removed these two bolts, slide the whole radiator assembly forward several inches. This is where the two long bolts really come in handy in order to keep it supported but allow it to come forward. Once you've moved the whole assembly forward, safely away from all the painted surfaces, you can double check to make sure that there's nothing else connected to that front assembly before you remove the last two bolts and completely take the assembly away from the car. And now we have access to the radiator assembly. Next up we're going to remove the five T30 Torx bolts on the radiator assembly. Four on the front and then one on the aluminum bracket on the passenger side. Now we're going to remove the four T30 Torx bolts on the back side of the radiator assembly. There's going to be one on the passenger side and three on the driver's side. After all nine of these Torx bolts are removed, we can finally fan out the radiator assembly and pull out the OEM intercooler. Now that we have the OEM intercooler uninstalled, we're going to transfer the rubber mounts over to the OEM delete brackets. Due to their shape, the mounts will only fit on the brackets in the correct position, but to make things easier, take notice of the arrow on the bottom of the mount. This arrow should be facing forward in the position shown here. Also notice only one of the brackets has an extra mounting tab on it. This is the passenger side bracket. Now that we have the intercooler mounts attached to the delete brackets, we're going to install them using the nine bolts and nuts included with the kit. They're going to be installed in the same position as the OEM intercooler had, five on the passenger side and four on the driver's side. Sometimes one of the mounting points will have a larger gap than the others. This is where the aluminum spacer comes into play. Use it to fill the largest gap by installing it as shown. Next we're going to remove the two rubber air guides on the front of the bumper assembly. They're not installed with any screws or bolts so you can just remove them by hand. Underneath we'll find that there's two square cutouts. These are where we'll insert our aluminum brackets. The bracket with the extra mount on it is for the air temperature sensor and should be installed on the driver's side. To install the brackets, insert the two square ends of the bracket through the square holes and then pull down until you hear a click. This will let you know that it's locked into place. If installed correctly, it'll sit flush like shown here. Now we're going to create a hole for the mounting bolt by drilling through the hole in the center of the bracket. Grab the 20 millimeter bolts and feed them through the holes we just drilled and secure them with a nut on the back side. Then install the four rubber spacers into the brackets. Next we need to get the air temperature sensor bracket out of the way by either bending it or cutting it off like we chose here. Position the intercooler core on the four studs of the rubber spacers and secure them with four nuts. With the intercooler attached, bring the whole assembly back over to the car and put it in a supported position to remount it. Reinsert the two long bolts or two of the original 16 millimeter bolts halfway to allow us to work on the other connections while it's supported. Next, reinstall the two T30 Torx bolts in the front of the upper assembly and the other two T30s above the headlights. Now we can finish reinstalling the other six 16 millimeter bolts on the front of the bumper assembly and replace the long bolts with the original 16 millimeter bolts or tighten the original 16 millimeter bolt in all the way if you use that method. Connect the air temperature sensor to the bracket on the driver's side. Now we're going to relocate the two horns. The passenger side is going to use the included relocation bracket while the driver's side is going to get flipped from the bottom position to the top position. This will allow room for the hoses to pass through. 
Next, transfer the rubber O-ring from the OEM adapter to the one included in the kit. Insert it into the turbo outlet pipe and use the OEM C-clip to secure the connection. Now we're going to install the silicone hoses. Put the clamps on the hoses before installing them and then connect them to their proper locations. The U-shaped hose goes on the driver's side. Once you have the silicone hoses properly fitted, go ahead and tighten down the clamps. Reconnect the radiator fan connection. Now the intercooler is fully installed and we just need to reinstall the bumper. Reconnect the fog light and side marker connections and then clip the bumper back into place. Reconnect the two T25 Torx bolts in the front of the bumper and the five in each wheel well. Next, reconnect the splash guard with the 8T25 and 8T20 Torx bolts underneath. Reinstall the front grille and the four T25 Torx bolts on top. Reconnect the crash sensor and headlight connections on both sides. Reconnect the hood release cable. Lastly, reconnect the negative battery terminal. This concludes the installation. Enjoy your new front mount intercooler. I'm a man.